ask you what your favorite holiday was, I would expect an answer like Christmas, maybe Thanksgiving, New Year's Eve perhaps, but you're all wrong. <laughs> because that is Memorial Day. <laughs> Memorial Day is where it's at, and I'll tell you why. First, my birthday is May 22nd, so <laughs> Memorial Day always falls right around my birthday, so I get an extra long celebration. Second, where I live in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul, it's the first reliably warm weekend of the year after a long, long winter. But third, and possibly most important of all, it's shopping. If you're in the market for a big ticket item, Memorial Day is where it's at. A new washer dryer, perhaps? A refrigerator? On this particular Memorial Day, it was a Peloton. Yes. 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 So you see, I was pregnant with my third and last baby. And after eight years of being pregnant, breastfeeding, or trying to become pregnant, I was done. I was going to take my body back, and Peloton was going to help me to get there. So. After a couple of months, after I had my baby, I was cleared to work out. I was ready. I opened up my drawer and pulled out my stretchiest pair of leggings to go over my still sore belly. I got my comfiest sports bra and my biggest t-shirt, and I was ready to go. Down the hall, down the stairs, clipped in the bike. Wah! Wah! <laughs> the baby was crying. Take two. We're back, clipped in the bike, baby strapped to the chest. <laughs> We're ready to go. I turn on the screen and I'm greeted with the smiling faces of the Peloton instructors. They look like they're walking around with Instagram filters. <laughs> and I scroll carefully through the screen and I locate Hannah Frankson. Hannah has very similar coloring to me, caramel colored skin, dark hair. And I say, if I am the before picture, she is gonna be my after picture. <laughs> and we're off. 20 minutes later, I am drenched. I don't know if it's the sweat or the drool, <laughs> but from that moment, I'm hooked. My name is Andrea Forscht. I am the Chief Consulting Officer of Hummingbird Humanity and a Pelotoner. <laughs> Hashtag Forscht of Nature. <laughs> Hashtag Find Me on the Leaderboard. Hashtag, if you know, you know. <laughs> what started out as a journey to lose weight, to get smaller, have a smaller dress size, turned into a journey that was so much more for me. It taught me about strength, it taught me about endurance, and it taught me about breath. And tonight, I'm gonna share with you some of the lessons I learned. So let's start with strength. After a little while, I decided, you know, the bike is great, but there's all these other classes on the platform. And so I ventured into strength training. I decided it was time to pick up the heavies. Lunges, squats, deadlifts were not my jam. But eventually, it got easier with great instruction. I was picking up heavier weights. I was staying in it for longer reps. And I was learning how to properly lift. I was learning how to be strong. That journey that started as skinny turned into a journey of stepping into my strength. I mentioned I'm a DEI professional. DEI is happening all around us in the world. As a professional, I'm preparing you for what you're seeing when you go out into the world. I went out into the world shortly after maternity leave. I had to travel to London. For me, that meant leaving my breastfeeding daughter at home. When I think about strength and being a mother, Breastfeeding requires a tremendous amount of strength. You're going in and you're doing the reps, right? So it's the pump, it's the breast, it's the pump, it's the breast. It reminded me a lot of the reps, right, in my strength classes. And so on this particular day, I'm at Heathrow Airport. I am away from my daughter for five days. The first set was making sure I had enough milk to sustain my daughter. The next set was all about making sure that I was able to maintain my supply while I was away. The third set was making sure that I was able to get 
that milk home to my daughter. That's liquid gold. That stuff's not going down the drain. I'm at Heathrow Airport. I've got my soft cooler on my shoulder, standing in line, anxiously waiting to see what's going to happen. I set it on the conveyor belt, and I watch it go through the scanner, and it's flagged. Somebody pulls it off and says, ma'am, whose is this? Oh, it's, it's mine. What is that? Oh, it's breast milk. It's breast milk. I'm bringing it home to my daughter. His face crumpled into disgust. And I knew that I was in my last set. This is where strength came in. So I asked to speak with a supervisor and then another supervisor. And I painstakingly watched as I tested each one of the 20 plus vials of breast milk that I wanted to carry home to my daughter and eventually made it onto my plane back to the States. When I think about strength training, where the change really happens is in that last set. That's where the challenge comes. And without challenge, it doesn't come change. And so in that moment, I was able to demonstrate strength. Endurance. So cycling, strength training. I decided I was going to be a runner. Now, if you ask Gregory, my husband, who's watching right there in that Zoom screen with my three little ones, Gregory would tell you that if you see Andrea running, you better run too. Because that means that somebody is chasing her, and it is not safe. Well, run I did. And I, again, I turned to Peloton to help me figure out how to do this. So 20 minutes turned into an hour. A couple of miles turned into four miles turned into me ending up on the finish line of the Twin Cities 10-mile race last fall. Amazing. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Endurance is probably the toughest DEI lesson for any organization. They want it now. They want to go at a sprint. If you're going to be an endurance runner, you know how important it is to set the pace early so that you're able to sustain that work, sustain that journey. Flash forward, I joined Hummingbird Humanity. We take a little bit of a different approach. We're a DEI firm that focuses on building human-centered workplace cultures. And we start from the beginning. We start by building the foundation. We learn the technique. We learn the language. We ground people in the concepts. So when it comes time for those hard conversations, when it comes time to endure the hard stuff, our teams, our companies, the organizations that we work with, they're ready. Endurance, making sure that you're not going out in an all-out sprint from the beginning, is important not only in distance running, but also in your DEI journey. Perhaps the most important, though, was breath. I learned the most about breath through my yoga and meditation practice. For me, it was an opportunity to get out of my head and into my body. I started to realize in my strength training and my running, when I was focused on the breath, I was able to lift more. I was able to run faster. I realized that it was my head that was wanting to give up, not my body. And if I was listening to my body, I was able to go the distance. So it's not just Peloton, right? I learned a lot of lessons on that bike that took me further than I ever thought that I could go. And so I'm going to take you all to Peloton. <laughs> I took my first Peloton class this week at the studio, and it was magical. So we're going to set the stage for this ride. So if I can. Uh, Bring you all. I'm going to channel my inner Hannah Frankson because now I am the after. <laughs> and I am going to have you all clip in, get your feet right, for a Peloton class. All right. Hey, Peloton. Thank you so much for joining me today. <laughs> I am so excited that you've chosen to clip in for this ride, a 20 minute Alicia Keys artist theme ride. <laughs> Let's take a look at that touch screen. On the right hand side, you have resistance. Turn that knob to the right, that road gets grittier. It gets harder. Turn that knob to the left, gets a little easier, a little bit more accessible. On the left side of your screen, that's cadence. That's setting your pace. That's going to determine how fast that your legs are going. Put those two together, and you have output. That is your power. So the next time that you are in a DEI meeting or a DEI situation, I want you to tap into that strength. I want you to tap into that endurance. I want you to focus on that breath. And I want you to get out there and do the hard work. So I'll see you on the leaderboard.